Penrith are going to run from right to left. Kevin Roberts is in charge of the match. Kevin deputising for Barry Barnes, who went down with influenza. And uh, Roberts answered the call very quickly. So Mark Levy to set this match in action. And it's going down to Paul Taylor, immediately looking for Houghton. And that'll be good for Houghton, I would imagine, to get an early touch. He'll probably be uh, steamed up and probably feeling a few nerves against his old club. There goes Mayers up into the fray, and he was met willingly by Matt Goodwin, put to ground. And now through Sterling, it's come to Laurie, and Laurie has tackled just outside the 22. Uh, as strong a Parramatta team as we've seen probably in the last six weeks, Bill Anderson. Yeah, it's a good side, Ray. Yeah. The last time these two sides met, Parramatta were weakened and, and Penrith were able to get away with them, but they'll find Parramatta a much tougher, tougher proposition tonight. That was a good kick by Sterling, but beautifully taken by Levy. Mosley in the tackle was Taylor. Watch Mosley tonight in the number nine. Don't think for one moment he's a hooker and just a hooker. Michael played with a junior club that I'm associated with, Parramatta Marists, and played at the back of the scrum for years and years. Houghton. Across to Cronin, now to Sterling, and Mike might have been better off not passing that ball, when you think about it, with hindsight. Kevin Dan was the tackler. There's the fend from Cronin. He got rid of the um, second row of Bergman. Away now for Paul Taylor, a short ball to Phelan. Former Rothmans medal winner in the Brisbane competition, Chris Phelan. Now to Taylor, across to Sterling, and just a handoff to Mosley. A lot of players in this Penrith side have uh, done, done service with Parramatta. Gary Howell, for one. Um, Mark Levy, of course, is another. And now we see the first scrum of the match to pack. Howell playing in that headgear, incidentally, in the front row in jumper number nine. It's a piece of equipment you don't see on modern day football is anywhere near with the commonness that it was uh, there many years ago. Oh, Alexander he came around the side of the scrum and win like a good second rower broke quickly when the ball was called lost and he just drove Alexander. This is Craig Connor, tackled by Sterling. He's a good player, Connor. He's done some, some mighty fine things through 1984. Goodwin up to the 22 line. Penrith with plenty of ball and plenty of chances to test Parramatta early. Out to Alexander, now with Izzard. A shorter ball to Warren Fenton, through one. But now, manhandled to the ground. Laurie and Mayers, the two men doing the defence, and always hurt Fenton. Timeout, says the referee, and indicates the fourth tackle as he calls for attention. This was the hit. Fenton got through one tackle, but then Mayers... Mears and Laurie, they backslammed him, and Fenton had no protection. He's very groggy. Mascara under the eyes. With all the Penrith players, Fenton, the trainer's probably saying, what day is it? How many fingers can you see? I hope he didn't answer that, because he didn't have any fingers out in front of Warren at the time. But he's all right. He's pretty tough. Most mountain men are. Here's Ross Gig, who played in that 1974 losing side to Western Division. He didn't want to tell me the truth when I asked him, but his coach, Tim Sheens, cleaned the matter up. That's a knock-on. Referee Roberts calling them back. Hold the phone, he said. We're back here for a scrum. Don't get too excited. Back on the 22 line, so the scrum is to pack. Alexander feeds, oh gee, he must think Kevin Roberts needs glasses, he got away with it, good luck to him. Here's Levy trying to get a ball away, trying to squeeze a pass out, and Roberts has caught Ella for the knock-on, quite rightly so. This is the first time, well that's a good run by Levy, uh, we've seen there, and already he's done a couple of good things, Mark. It's the first time Alexander has actually opposed Sterling, penalty to Parramatta. I recall Graham McNeese doing a sports spot for us last year on Alexander at the Parramatta training session and he made no bones of the fact that this man Sterling was his his hero and 
Alexander until tonight has not had to actually oppose Sterling. Both came out of Fairfield Patrician Brothers, as did Mark Levy. Through Laurie, here's Mayers. Played back to Mosley. Mosley loves to run from dummy half. He's got a lot of that Mario Fennick in him. Steve Edge is now to ruck half. Through Sterling to Kenny. Kenny to Phelan. Oh, feeble attempt to tackle by Craig Connor. Well, Craig Connor, I've only just a few seconds back wrapped him and he's had an awful lock forward tackle. Phelan eats that sort of stuff up. On the halfway line, Mark Laurie plays it. Dummy half edge says, let's go blind. Sterling and it's with win. And tackled around the legs by Matt Goodwin. Dummy half Michael Cronin. First time back on television for a long, long time. Must be something like three months. That's Levy. Just outside the 22. Edge and Mayers with the tacklers. Connor passes to Izzard. It goes on now to the blonde-headed winger Steve Davies. Davies on his quarter line. Gig keeps up the wrap, puts the kick in for touch. He's going to find it, I think. No, it's starting to coil and straighten. And Sterling's back for it. Asks Hunt to take it away. And oh, Hunt got off that foot beautifully. And he's made a big run. Neil Hunt, tremendous broken play runner. When you kick the ball to Neil Hunt, there's no value in going up in ones and twos. You've got to send a full defensive line up at him to give him no opportunity to use his step. Beautiful infield ball by Cronin. Mayer's got a ball to Kenny. He's tackled right on that halfway line. Cronin, long ball. Sterling, short pass. This is Houghton. No gain in ground. Simmons was the tackler. With Matt Goodwin up the top. Now to Paul Taylor. Now Peter Sterling. This is Peter Wynn. Getting underneath another high tackle. Penrith are not tackling low enough for mine. Might be fine to go high, but you need somebody around the legs as well. Kenny Cronin knocked down by Izzard. This will be six more if Kenny gets it. Kenny has got it. Six more for Parramatta. They're on the halfway. Taylor, Sterling, short pull, got past for Phelan. Don't really think he was needed out there at the, that particular time, Chris Phelan. He seemed to jolt it. This is Mosley. Penrith's defence. To me, a touch too high. See, we've seen a couple of examples of players allowed to almost have a free run. Taylor playing it. 32 metres out. You want to be careful, he'll bring a penalty to the Penrith tackler. It's with Sterling. Now Kenny. Cronin. Short ball. Mayers. Knocked down again by Penrith. And uh, it's in the touch. And it's going to be a scrum. Midway 22, halfway. Penrith end of the ground. I think he's going to give Parramatta the feed. Yep. Fed by Sterling, won by Parramatta. Long pass by Sterling. Kenny's got around Izzard. He's away from Connor. Taken by uh, the centre three quarter, Ross Gig. Gee, that was a long pass from Sterling. Kenny got inside Izzard, who went up too quickly. Penalty to Parramatta. And here's an area of their game that has been sadly lacking prior to the return of Michael Cronin. He's back and he should have no trouble in raising the flags and bringing first points. I think the return of Michael Cronin will uh, improve a few areas of Parramatta's play, not just their goal kicking. Just repeating, the quarterfinals, dates and venues are already decided. New South Wales country come to Sydney next Wednesday to play Eastern Suburbs, incidentally on the Tuesday, at league headquarters, uh, they'll be announcing their Caltex Country Player of the Year, uh, the Country League, and thanks to them for their invitations. For uh, the attendance there on Tuesday. Here's Cronin. Sweet as you like them. 2-0 in favour of Parramatta. Penalty goal to Michael Cronin. Just tidying up those other quarters, repeating for you. July 11, we go to Brisbane, to Lang Park, for what should be one heck of a game. Brisbane versus Canterbury. And then we go to Tamworth, to the Golden West, for Balmain and St George. And that should be welcomed by Tamworth people because of uh, the presence of Chris Guider and Graham Wynn. David Brooks from Balmain comes from, I think, Armadale. 
so it's got a lot of local interest as we see Parramatta leading 2-0 and this giant of a young man Paul Mears plays it inside the 22 line Sterling putting the kick in looking for the touchline finding Mark Levy getting in the road making a nuisance of himself tonight is Mark he's had Sterling beautifully covered this is Davies getting out of dummy half. Pursued and caught by Hunt. Laurie also in the tackle. Now through Alexander. This is for Simmons. Turning it back for Fenton. He's okay apparently. Completely recovered from uh, that very heavy tackle. Pass to Izzard. He puts the kick in. It's not going to find touch. It'll go into the in goal for Taylor. Taylor's going to watch it like a hawk, it says. We'll take it out to the 22 for the place kick restart. Crowd booing. I think they thought Taylor got a hand to it. Any chance of uh, analysing it? Looking at him, I didn't think he got a hand to it. Played by Edge. Now to Sterling. This is Laurie. Feeling. Apparently that incident with Paul wasn't uh, well enough covered by that head on camera so it's a waste of time to showing it to you. Here's Wynn now making a run down the flank and to the halfway. Dummy half is Chris Houghton, Sterling's calling it, now with Mares, Mares over the halfway, turning, hit and spin, back to Edge, Edge gains another five, that's five tackles gone. Sterling's to dummy half, to the blind side for Cronin, they're going to run it, and they do that, Ella trapped with the ball, and that's the turnover. First of the game, Alexander, Goodwin, and taken around the legs by Michael Mosley. Over the top by Edge. Dummy half Levy. Now to Alexander. That's Roy Simmons. Cutout pass round the back door. Izzard nicely anticipated though in the defence by Kenny. And this is Simmons again and uh, really eating up a tackle. Izzard. Levy to kick. Off the left foot. Going down towards Chris Houghton. Houghton's let it bounce. I'd say probably the lights didn't help him there because he would know better than to let the ball bounce. Here's Taylor finding a, a, a gap. And uh, he'll play at 10 metres on his side of the halfway. Sterling. And then he's cut out Mosley and got the ball around the back to Neil Hunt who came in from his wing. And Mosley is the dummy half. Sterling runs decoy to the blind. Mosley gains a further five up the middle. They still haven't reached the halfway line. Now a good back line. Kenny to Cronin. Cronin puts the, uh, the, the hip in. That is uh, well marked there by Bergman, the 11 for Penrith. Mayers, hand off to Cronin. Cronin around the back to win. Win to Kenny. Ella takes it beautifully, then gets it to Houghton. And Houghton is held on five. Played back to Steve Edge, given to Peter Sterling. Up goes the midfield bomb. Sterling's put them all on side. Up for it goes Gonzalez and well taken by Sterling. Plenty of action in the first 20. Parramatta leading 2-0 as Davies gets a pass away to Izzard. And Izzard is neatly grassed out there. Just outside his 22 by Mosley again in company with uh, Kenny. Here's Simmons, the Penrith hooker and captain. Tacklers were edge and win. Bergman. Alexander. Fenton. Around the leg, Sterling. Up the top, Mayers. And Fenton knows he's been tackled again by that big front rower from Parramatta. Good work. Trying to make the bus, but the defence is butte. And I'll tell you, he's getting through plenty of it. And, and I'm talking about daisy-cutting tackles. Michael Mosley. Kick ahead by Gary Howe. Going straight to Neil Hunt. Went straight through his arms. And then he got away from Davies, who went up too fast, much too fast. And now a hand off to Kenny. Here's trouble for Penrith. Kenny's up to the 22. The pass has gone to Taylor. Taylor's got a pass back to Edge. Can he find anybody? I'll tell you what he can. He's found the zip zip man. And Ella has scored a try that probably had a touch of luck about it, but it also was quite spectacular. Well, Ella scores. It should have been shut down here, but the Penrith winger went up like a bull at a gate. 
And I'm not trying to be overcritical of the lad, but to go up fast is one thing, but when you get into the target area, he should have steadied. And then the dangers of Hunt and Kenny were to the fore. Taylor looked like he'd absolutely made a botch of it. Then he found Stephen Edge waiting, and along came Ella to score a Parramatta try right underneath the uprights. Cronin from 10 metres out, right in front, kicks the goal, and Parramatta lead by eight points to nil. Eight nil in favour of Parramatta over Penrith. Penrith should have learnt their lesson here that you don't kick the ball to Neil Hunt. Here he makes a break down the sideline, slip the pass back to Kenny, and Kenny's one of the best players in the world of positioning his supports. He found Paul Taylor inside. Taylor probably found the hard way to the try line, really. He had support on the left-hand side, but slipped it back to Edge, and then it's the ever-present Steve Ella who goes over for the first try of the years. Restart now, coming up just five minutes from quarter time by Mark Levy, and it's with Taylor. Gives it to Houghton. Houghton takes it out towards the 22 line. Way back to Mosley. Mosley throws the dummy and scampers out the other way. Good gain of about eight metres. And now Houghton decides to do something similar. A bit of miles, or should I say a few metres, to be gained out of the dummy half. From Taylor to Kenny and a cutout ball. Neil Hunt has to go back to cover it up. Referee indicating four tackles gone. And up the blind side goes Ella. Gee, it was a narrow blind to be working on, but... Managed to gain about five metres. Now the clearing kick for Sterling. Down it goes straight to Mark Levy. And Levy is on the halfway line. This is Davies. A tackle by Steve Ella. Penrith are finding it very hard to breach this good Parramatta defence. And they've got some good kickers in their team, such as Mark Levy and Greg Alexander. I'm somewhat surprised that they haven't resorted to the chip or grubber kick through the defensive line. Here's Simmons. Taken by Taylor. Got the ball away, though, to Bergman. Kenny's around the legs. Alexander. And a penalty inside the five against Parramatta. And uh, I would guess that Levy would kick for line here. of course for the, the man who will ultimately be named as the national superstar the national panasonic superstar for 1984 twenty thousand dollars in national products waiting for him as ross gig kicks taylor's got it well covered fenton went through then he looked at the referee as if to say am i onside or offside in fact, he almost gave himself up. He might have, might as well have had a set of handcuffs on. I'd say that referee Kevin Roberts had called him offside in the run of play. Oh, Mears bursting onto a Kenny pass. Look at the big man's speed over the halfway. Centre kicks. Ella might get a bounce here. No, it's come off Ella and gone to ground. Roberts allows the advantage to run before calling the scrum back just inside the Penrith 22. Well, you saw... You saw the speed of that man there. Who was it the other day we, we caught him chasing some bloke? Mayors, I'm talking about. We, we almost looked in horror as he sat out after him. I think it might have been Gary Bridge. It was the game against Balmain, I'm sure. And uh, whatever it was, it was a back, and he showed a clean pair of wheels. Paul Mayers, he's very fast for a forward. Goodwin playing it now on the 22 line. This man is Craig Connor. Penrith with their... Backs to the wall, trailing 8-0. And they're trying to find a hole in this Parramatta defence. Gary Howe went as close as anybody has. This man has to be nabbed. Gonzalez, beautifully taken by Mark Laurie. Apparently continuing the good form from Sunday's match against North. Mark, one of the many Laurie brothers. Brother of Rocky, our first Dally M winner. Rocky Laurie, now a successful coach up at where? Warhope. Long ball to Kenny, Cronin, the run round, and <laughs> Cronin hung on, and Ross Gig snapped him up. Sterling, Kenny, Kenny's, in, uh, Kenny's having a, a big night here. He's having a ball, six more tackles. Here's Hunt running with it, trying to get between the defence. Roberts has uh, nullified the tackle count, and it's being played. We're in the last 60 seconds of the first quarter. Phelan 
Dummy half is Steve Edge. First pivot is Laurie running a decoy. It's gone to Sterling. Now they hit it up the middle. Mosley hits and spins. It's back with Peter Wynn. Looks to hand off. Gets out of a tackle. Turns it into Sterling. Ball to ground. And referee Roberts will put a scrum down. Well, they're really hot tonight. They're trying to do almost the impossible, Bill, aren't they? Playing very well, Parramatta, and I don't think it's any coincidence that Mike Cronin's back in the side and their backs are looking electric. It's an impressive set. Sterling, Kenny, Cronin, Ella. And then you've got Taylor and Hunt thrown in for good measure and a bloke called Grace to come into it. So that's a good ruling by Kevin Roberts. A very good ruling. The ball was passed by Paul Taylor to a man in an offside position, Mike Cronin. And Roberts was spot on. So, there's the siren. And uh, they're going to take a shot. Kevin Dan is the man taking the kick. Kevin uh, had almost given the game away until just a few weeks ago when he decided, well, maybe I can be of some help. And uh, that's what he's proving right at this very moment for coach Tim Sheens. I think he played for the state, Kevin, Dan. He played one game as fullback. On this very for ground, New South I think. Wales. Yeah, I think it was for New South Wales on this very ground. I wouldn't be surprised that was the night that Alan Smith scored four tries or something. Here's Dan's kick. It hasn't got the length. And it's going to go over the dead ball line. That's the end of the section, the end of the first 20 minutes, with Parramatta scoring one try, Michael Cronin kicking two goals, and they lead Penrith by eight points to nil. Welcome back for the second quarter. The Eels eight, Penrith no score. Levy sending it on down to Paul Taylor. Out to Brett Kenny. Taken by Brad Izzard. Rivalries out there, as I, I br briefly mentioned it earlier, the number of players who either come through Penrith Juniors to Parramatta or vice versa. There'll be tremendously intense personal duels out there tonight. Sterling with a big kick, getting it down, and oh, he's no, he hasn't. It's uh, straightened up. It must have landed only a foot in from the touchline. Levy then tried to throw the dummy, and Hunt uh, didn't take it. It's played by Levy now, just outside the 22. Well, you would have bet long odds on that that kick from Sterling was going to find touch. Turned, and Craig Connor has run straight into Peter Wynn. 8-0 then, a try for Steve Eller. And two goals for Michael Cronin. This is Goodwin getting, getting across the ground, crabbing across the ground, and it makes for a pretty easy uh, target. And Phelan was able to pick him off. Mayers making the tackle on uh, Fenton. The ball spun away for Levy, who takes a quick look and tries to separate the defence, but he doesn't succeed. Taylor gives it to Hunt. Across and, oh dear, that was a hit. Well, Hunt stepped as he normally does and he ran straight into Craig Connor and gee, it was a bang, wasn't it? Well, Neil Hunt's only got the step off the right foot, but it's a very good one, but Craig Connor read it particularly well. He realised that uh, the Hunt was going to use his step and put himself in the right spot at the right time. Played by Chris Feeler, passed by Steve Edge, to Peter Sterling, now to Mark Laurie. And that's better defence, one down low, one up the top. Midway 22, halfway, Parramatta's end of the field. Blindside for Ella, who kicks, and it's going down to Levy, who's having a busy night, and Ella has been able to find the touchline. Just outside the 22. That's the first time that Levy's been beaten by a kick in general play tonight. And it took that man to do it. <laughs> Levy playing it just outside his quarter. This is Izzard. And now Alexander. He's got to be stopped. Beautiful run by young Greg Alexander. Pass back inside to Izzard. And oh, did he take a hit. Ball came coughing out. 
It's gone from Sterling across through Laurie to Ella. Ella on to Phelan. Phelan, 15 metres into Penrith territory. From Mayers to Ella to Sterling to Mosley. Midway 22 halfway, Penrith enter the field. 8 nil in favour of the Eels. Sterling with a short ball for, for Neil Hunt, who's apparently been given a, a roving commission by Coach Moni. He must have told Hunt to do whatever you like when we've got the ball, come off your wing at any time. Neil Hunt was dropped from this game tonight and only got a reprieve when Eric Groth pulled out. From the way Neil's playing, I'd suggest that his work rate's been down and he's out to prove that he can rectify that and remedy it and fight his way back into the side. Good play by Peter Wynn. That's a giant of a kick back into the centre. Sterling gets it down to big mares. He'll be hard to stop. He's found uh, Steve Eller again. Eller's got underneath them, but he's tackled a metre out. Eller tackled a metre out from the line. It's with Taylor, now Sterling. This is Kenny. He holds it back and gives it to Mosley. The ball down. Dived on by Simmons. Played about eight metres out from the Penrith line. Split across there to Connor. Well, you might think I'm kidding, but Connor had he have wanted to pass then. Penrith had a two-man overlap on the right, but he thought it was best we settle it, I suppose, and an opportunity went begging. Now it's with Roy Simmons, trying to burrow his way through. Mayers and Phelan making the tackle jointly with Mosley. It's now with Levy, switches it across the back of the ruck to Izzard, who gets around Taylor, tries to get outside the 22, ridden to the ground by Cronin. That's five gone. Levy's the man to watch. Here he comes. And there goes the kick. A torpedo punt. Houghton getting across for it. And uh, it's bouncing down inside the 22. Houghton taking it back. Kevin Dan goes up and makes the tackle on Houghton on his own 22. Hunt, Sterling, Cronin. Cronin back to Sterling. Sterling looking for the opening. Probing, eventually it opened, gave it to Laurie. Laurie held by the Penrith defence, about 35 metres out. And you can see there the difference in confidence in the two sides. Parramatta with their experienced and skilled players in their own quarter, the opportunity arose and they were prepared to spread it. Penrith in the same circumstances had to settle the play. Neil Hunt again got across from his left wing and got involved in the play and shades of... This is Houghton, now with Phelan. And tackled 10 metres short of halfway, he had to pass that ball. He really had to pass that ball and they would have had a man or two man overlap. Knocked down by Penrith, six more for Parramatta. Going to ground with it is Neil Hunt. Sterling, Cronin. Cronin takes it up and then slides the pass. Picks up Sterling, it's gone out to Mark Laurie. Through an OP, a handoff back inside to Taylor. Taylor's going back into the centre of the ground. Finds Stephen Edge. Edge is tackled, 32 metres out. Oh boy, they're prepared to try anything tonight, Parramatta. They're really, they're out there to entertain by the look of things. Mayers down to Mosley. Mosley to Sterling. Gets inside Alexander. It's gone to Hunt. Gets inside Izzard. Over it goes to Laurie. Laurie's been um, really hit. And uh, what was brewing up to a certain try now goes back to a scrum. They are prepared to try anything, but you need the skilled players to be able to carry that through, and Parramatta have got it. You can see here Neil Hunt made that break, stepped off the right foot, slipped the pass to Laurie. Unfortunately, he dropped it because Laurie's one of the players I've been impressed with tonight. Mm -hmm. Alexander coming away to the open side after a Penrith scrum win. Just getting back to Mark Laurie, he's a player that's been used in a number of positions for Parramatta, but uh, I think he's in, he's in his rightful spot tonight at lock forward. Unfortunately, he's got a man in front of him called Ray Price, so it's only a temporary thing. Goodwin, neatly tackled by Edge, just outside the 22 line. Gig, Izzard, with the clearing kick. It's a good kick by Izzard too, it's going right down onto the 22 line. And Houghton, the winger, he's, he's had three opportunities to take a ball on the full, and three times he's let it bounce. Houghton playing it back to Taylor. Now it's with Cronin. Short ball to Kenny, draws them, gets it to Ella. Ella sprints, goes down the touchline, gets inside the touchline now before being wrestled to ground by Alexander. But every one of these uh, Parramatta players tonight is in a, a hungry mood, a mood almost suggestive that 
several, several critics have been saying they can't do it again this year. And tonight they're displaying just what they can do when they get something like their first grade side back on the paddock. This is Phelan now, and he's taken it to ground again. And I emphasize again, when opportunities have been there, should he have taken a look and passed? It's with win now. 35 meters out, tackle number five. Here's the playmaker, Sterling. To the blind, a cutout pass, and it's gone into touch. So it'll be a Penrith loose and a Penrith scrum feed just outside the 22. Penrith trailing Parramatta, eight points to nil. Fed by Alexander, straight through the tunnel. <laughs> One by Penrith. Levy. Izzard. Alexander. Kevin Dan. Cutting out Ross Geek, finding Davies. Taken by Hunt. Izzard. Simmons, 32 metres out and a driving tackle by Laurie and Mosley. Alexander, chipping over the top, went for the regather, six more, touched by Parramatta, Penrith coming up with it. And they're the things that Penrith have got to try, the Parramatta defensive line's looking very strong and they need that variety, particularly in kicking if they're going to break it. And this is Ross Gig giving it back to Roy Simmons, he went to give a pass to the to the right and there was nobody there in fact six of his teammates were standing within three meters of him Penrith bunching up in the middle They're not fanning both sides of the ground and filling it all up this is his eye that's good work Gary Howe wrestled to the ground by wind Penrith doing some or making some inroads at the moment as it comes across from Levy a long ball Fenton can't take it and it's beaten Gonzalez and gone over the touchline to a scrum Nine metres on the Parramatta side of halfway. End of the season, of course, we'll have the Golden Tries in their correct order. You'll be given the chance to match up that order. And you could win a trip for two flying with Japan Airlines to Japan and then on to Los Angeles. Brett Kenny and Michael Cronin working together. And then Ella came in and that's created a, a bit of space for Hunt to work in. And Hunt is tackled near the halfway line. Parramatta forming up their ranks now as it goes back towards that blind. It's Laurie who is able to get out of a couple of would-be tackles. They had him and let him go. He's 10 metres into Penrith territory and Parramatta are deep and wide to the right. Out to Taylor, Sterling, win. A forward hit up and a turn back to Sterling. To Sterling about seven metres into Penrith's area. Play right in centre ground. Now it's with Taylor. Cronin gets it to Mayers. Mayers is having a picnic outside of Cronin and Kenny tonight. And he's taken it down about 25 metres out from the Penrith line. Mosley, a cutout ball coming down to Steve Ella. Ella tries to get back inside them, but he's tackled on five. So it's come now to Peter Wynn. Wynn cuts them out and passes to Cronin. Cronin looks back and finds Kenny. Kenny decides to put the kick in. Mosley was in front of him. He's going through, and that should be a penalty to Penrith. It is against Mosley in front of the kicker. Mosley wasn't in your picture until the last few seconds, but take it for sure, he was in front of the kicker. And a rightful penalty to this man's team. taken on the 22 line. Eight minutes out from the half-time break. Whoops. Simmons hit the ground, a player getting in the road, basically. This is Levy. To the 22 line, Craig Connor is getting some attention for Penrith. Goodwin going to the blind. And this is Davies. In the side tonight. In place of Brett Lobb. Again the ball kicked by Mark Levy. Taylor using his wingers and, and Neil Hunt is certainly getting plenty of work. He's gone looking for a lot of it. 
This is Michael Cronin. Cutting out Sterling, picking up Houghton. Passes and finds Mosley. Mosley hit very hard by Gary Howe. And will play it just outside the 22. From edge, it's gone to Phelan. Phelan neatly tackled by Matt Goodwin. Taylor's gone into distribute. Turns it back for Mayers, steaming up the middle. Then to edge. Edge thought about passing to Taylor, but he pulled it back. Play to Sterling, given to Wynn, and Parramatta is storming up the middle as Wynn tries to get a handoff away to a Parramatta support. It's been taken by Penrith and knocked on by the Panthers. And this scrum will go down 10 metres on the Penrith side of halfway. Scrums are 6 4 to Penrith, penalties 3 2 to the Panthers. Scrum won by the Blue and Golds. Sterling. Taylor with. Taylor, Sterling, Laurie. Mayors, dummy half. Looks at Peter Sterling, asks him what'll we do now? And Sterling obviously said settle it for one. Big Mayors is tackled. 30 metres up. Four tackles gone against Parramatta. Mosley holding the ball back and tackled just outside the 22. Sterling's to the left, Mayors to the right. Here's the big fella. Putting up the bomb and getting underneath it is uh, Levy. Got a bit of cover from Craig Connor. Sterling cuts Levy down. Well, it goes through Mark, Le Mark Levy's mind when that little number seven from Parramatta tackles him. Of course, Levy was the, the fellow that really uh, nurtured, if you like, Peter Sterling. I think Peter used to live with Mark's family. And now he's blossomed into one of the world's great halfbacks, and that was him around the legs of Craig Connor. Here's Simmons back to Howe. Good passing by the Panthers. Goodwin's pass has gone astray, swooped on by Houghton. But the referee is ruled knocked down by Parramatta. Letting Roberts know what they think of the ruling. And let's have a look at it on the desk. Hmm. Maybe the crowd were right. But here's Penrith now with Levy getting a pass away very nicely to Izzard and then on to Gig. They've got the overlap and it's with uh, Kevin Dan, but he's tackled by Brett Kenny. Davies. Around the legs was Michael Mosley. Gee, he's made some tackles. Alexander, Goodwin on the inside. Simmons, there's just a, a, a lack of understanding here in this Penrith routine tonight. Goodwin, he's got a ring of defenders around him. And Cronin it is who makes the eventual tackle. But Mosley was the man who actually tripped him in the first instance away now with Levy who's got away from a tackle found his art he's put it down his art he would have been hard to stop and Sterling it is who picks it up for Parramatta we saw another example there of one of the problems that Penrith are having and that's the fact that this Parramatta defense is so mobile particularly up wide Penrith have been able to make breaks but as soon as they make and Parramatta are able to co cover up and nullify them is Hunt getting inside one around a second comes to a third then takes the tackle just outside the 22 line from Mosley to Phelan Phelan taken by Alexander and will play it back to Mosley Sterling calling it to the right Mosley puts in a kick that's going to find touch about 30 meters out from the Penrith line talking of golden tries earlier and the chance to fly with Japan Airlines to Japan and Los Angeles the player creating the golden try he'll be rewarded with that $5,000 cold gold ingot made possible by Carlton and United Breweries and as Billy Anderson will tell you they make a mighty fine beer Levy pursued and caught by Kenny backing up with Speedy Gonzalez Hunt's down there to cover it up now there's a chance for Parramatta. They will run it very quickly. Houghton back into the centre, finds Ella. He's got Kenny coming up on his inside. There's big chance.
trouble coming for the Panthers. What a great try. Oh, that's a superb Eagles try. Hello and Kenny. You cannot deny them when they're in this frame of mind. They could build a mountain of points. Well, they absolutely specialise in what you're about to see, the Eels. You've heard me tell you about the first and sixth tackles. They love it. This was on the first, and this is when they want to run. Hunt gave it to Houghton. Ella to the halfway, and look at this man positioning himself, Kenny. He could almost smell a try. And Ella heard that familiar voice of his international colleague, and Kenny was in to score. 12-0, Parramatta. Michael Cronin right in front. Can't give him anything too hard at this stage of his career. Right in front of the kicks it. 14 0. 14 0 in favour of the Eels. Here's the try again, Bill. Parramatta are the masters of broken play, and here we, here we can see living proof of it. The break's made by Horton. He slipped the ball to Kenny, to, to Ella. Ella made the break, drew the fullback lead, he turned it inside, of course, and who's that man? Brett Kenny, and I don't think it's any coincidence, Kenny's back at 5-8 tonight and having his best game of the year. So it's Mark Levy to restart, just seconds in front of the break. Mosley, he's put it down, it'll be a scrum because diving on it, no, Penrith have got it. I thought for a moment that Phelan had it, but it's with the Panthers and Gary Howell has tackled. Got to pass away. This is Matt Goodwin. Or in fact, it was Peter Bergman. Connor. 30 metres out now. And uh, it's with Taylor. The referee indicated a charge down, did he not? I just had my eyes off it for a second. But anyway, the siren has sounded. Kevin Roberts has acknowledged that. And that's the end of the first 40 minutes, with Parramatta leading Penrith by 14 points to nil, two tries and three goals. We'll take a break. 14 nil Parramatta leading as Michael Cronin prepares to restart the action. Is uh, beaten both Levy and Davies. So a line dropout to restart the play for Penrith. Brad War is on for Penrith. There he is in jumper 19. Murray. Uh, Warren Fenton is the man who's been taken out of the, uh, the Penrith side. He's hit very hard early in the match. Here's Taylor. Tackled by Simmons. This is Peter Wynn. Now to be played by Mosley. Off to Sterling. And this bomb, they're all on side. Levy goes for it and stands his ground and takes it well. Good take by Levy. Guard. He was one of Penrith's better players early in the year, but suffered a knee injury, and this would only be his second or third game back after his operation. Here's a clearing, sending it down straight into the arms of Taylor. And Neil Hunt is required to take it back and away from some defence that it, it, it's not going through with its commitment, the defence. Going in and trying to make the tackle and uh, 
so many times we've seen Parramatta players explode out of it. And that's disappointing when you're a coach because the hardest part of making any tackle is making the effort to get there. Once you get there, the easiest part is putting the man down. Parramatta with the ball, 35 metres out. Sterling, it's with Cronin, he's gone back inside and popping the pass back and uh, it's back with the Penrith side, Brad War. Connor, Mosley around the legs. Mosley at half time had made uh, 17 tackles, by the way. He had topped the tackle count at 17. And uh, he wasn't far in advance of Mark Laurie, who had made 15 first half tackles. But you didn't have to be a, a road scholar to work out that Mosley was making a lot of tackles out there. This is Simmons trying to hand the ball off to Connor. Nothing's really gelling for Penrith. And in contrast, the, the other 13 with the blue and gold jumpers on are doing everything and it's coming off. Here's Hunt. Back to the halfway. I can't recall having seen a winger the ball in his hands as much as Neil Hunt in the first 40 minutes. Shades of Ray Blacklock and John Ferguson when they were over at Newtown with Warren Ryan. Win. Playing it to Edge. Edge out of a tackle. Giving it back to Simmons. Spreads the ball out to Ross Gigg. Gig has heard it back in field. He was looking for his winger, but his winger had actually fallen back into a defensive position. This is him now, Davies. 14 nil then in favour of Parramatta as Alexander fires the ball over the shoulder of Goodwin, who was running as a decoy and wasn't ready to take it. And it's a pretty ordinary performance from Penrith tonight. Well, it may well be an ordinary performance, but we've got to give a lot of credit to the Parramatta defence. They've just kept going up and making tackles all night. Simmons. It's Gary Howe. Good piece of football by him. Here's Levy. Picked up by Alexander. Five tackles gone. Back to Brad Levy again. Ella's underneath it. Now watch out if he, uh, if he happens to get into a space. 32 metres out from the Parramatta line. Houghton coming across the ground. Met and tackled by Brad Izzard. Second tackle against the Eels. Sterling switching it back inside for Cronin. Cronin taking it within 15 metres of the halfway line. Sterling turning it back inside and his win going back to that blind. Sterling, Della, Mosley was taken very heavily in the tackle and they took the ball off him and it's a penalty to the Yields. Steve Robinson in 15 warming up for Penrith. Steve played the off-season under Malcolm Reilly at Castleford together with Manley's Brett Atkins. In fact, talking of Malcolm Reilly, he'll be part of the, the Golden Eagles touch football match at Brookie on Sunday. We'll be down there covering the big game, of course, Manly and Canterbury, but Phil Lowe and Malcolm Reilly, all the guys will be down there on Sunday turning it on before the first great match. Good work by Manly getting such a promotion together. Mayers, he's put it down and a scrum. In goes Robinson in 15. Shaking hands with Mark Levy. Mark, I guess, was just saying welcome to the welcome to the situation. It's 14-0. The other team's leading us. Alexander to Izzard. Ben Gonzalez is the player off for Penrith. Levy. Good one. Rangy customer. Penalty to Parramatta, and he's got him for not facing goal-goal when playing the ball and back-chatting. Oh, that's stupid. That 
it's stupid when you've got a bloke like Cromer on the other side, and he's now going to give him a almost a pot shot at it. From 30 metres out, not quite that, Cronin right in front. In big league out today, the story about the promise Phil Sixworth has made to coach Bobby Fulton. A full report on last night's second test. With all its elbows. And how Wally Lewis managed to survive. And St George have declared themselves good things to take out the 84 Premiership. A colour spread of the Sharks. Plus the news that the St George versus Canberra match at Seaford Oval in a couple of weeks will be televised live into Sydney. All that and more in big league out today. Yeah, live telecast into Sydney from Seaford Oval. That'll be great. Cronin, he's got it. But that doesn't surprise too many people, I suppose, from right in front, 30 metres out, four out of four for Cronin, 16 nil the Eels. 11 minutes of the third quarter remain. And Levy's been doing plenty of this tonight, kicking off. Kenny. Gregan. I was just going to ask Billy, does he think that maybe John Money might bring Cronin off? And uh, we got the message from the sideline that he is, in fact, going to do that. I'm sure he'd like to leave Mick on as long as he possibly can to give him match fitness, but uh, Cronin is carrying a groin injury and uh, he won't want to aggravate that. That is a knock-on on the scrum 10 metres Parramatta side of halfway. Quinn's coming on now and I'm sure that's a, we'll get a sigh of relief from the Penrith players anyhow. Not so much Quinn going on, it's Cronin coming off. But Cronin comes from the field, that right knee heavily strapped after the medial ligament operation. But he is suffering from a groin injury. And they are a damn nuisance, a groin injury. They take longer to heal than a broken leg. This is Houghton. I'll tell you, I'll tell you about for that comment, a bloke called Changa Langlands. Mosley. Ten metres his side of the halfway. Sterling. He should find the line, or was he shooting for line? I think he's going to find it anyway. 15 out from the Penrith line. Now, Hunt's having a yarn to Kenny. So we can expect if they happen to pop up here with some ball against the feed, there'll be something on. Wishful thinking, probably. Alexander to put it back in again. And a penalty. Two Penrith. Feet across against edge. Levy finding the line. 15, 15 metres short of halfway. Simmons. Gee, that's a good schoolboys match tonight for 10 viewers. Uh, the two sides that have had the most success in schoolboy football that we've had on the screen, Holy Cross Ride and Fairfield Pats, they put on a good game. Played by Davies. Spun back blind for Levy. A handoff down to Bergman. Played near the halfway line. Alexander, Simmons out very wide. And now Brad Izzard. Cut down by Kenny. Stood and got it back to Simmons. Does something similar. Finds Robinson. Did well to get a pass to War. Then Goodwin's pass has gone to ground. Davies is on it. And the referee is ruling five tackles. The crowd roaring for a knock on against Davies. It's out with uh, Levy. He puts up a midfield bomb. Gary Howell must have been 30. Oh! Knock well, I suppose you could any, you'd knock anything on, but I was just looking at Gary Howell. He must have been 30 metres offside. So there's no way he was going to worry Chris Houghton, but I think in the final analysis he did worry Chris Houghton. And that's probably why Chris Houghton has let the ball bounce so many times tonight. The first one he's tried to take on the full, and it proved a, a total embarrassment for him. Levy across the line, quick hands through Gig. It's with his art now. Ella comes from behind. Izzard casting the shoe. 
from Levy to Alexander, out to Gig, and uh, props and comes back and finds Goodwin, and gets a one-handed to Alexander. Greg had a look on the outside, but there's nobody there other than the touch judge. Penrith are stringing together a lot of passes, but the Parramatta defence continues to hold, and there's a lot of commitment out there tonight from Parramatta. Yeah. You could say that, Bill. With a great deal of confidence. As I said, said to you earlier, and, and feel free to disagree, they look like a team that's had a bit of criticism and people saying they can't, they can't hold the pennant, they can't hold the crown, but they've got a pretty good side out there tonight and they're just showing a few people what they can do. Would you agree with that, Connor? I would agree with that, but I'm, I'm still... Oh, look Oops. at break by Kenny. Here's trouble. Izzard's after him. That's a good run by Brad Izzard. I must admit I thought Kenny would run straight away from him. Well, how did he stay in? Well, Chalk went flying left, right and centre. Crowd, and I'm sure Brad Izzard were waiting for uh, the touch judge to say a scrum. Just getting back to Parramatta, I think the two critical things tonight for them have been one, Cronin's return because of the steadying influence he provides, but secondly the fact that Kenny's gone to 5'8", and gee, I like the look of him there. I think he's he puts a lot of pressure on opposition sides with his ability to make breaks himself, but also his good service to his outside backs. And with Cronin back in the side, uh, Ella has Ella has been living at outside centre. There hasn't been the shuffling. I might be wrong, but I haven't seen them switching like they used to. Not tonight, at all. In other words, Brett has been told have one position and just stay there tonight. Scrum one by Penrith. And this man is Robinson. The pass down to Levy. Connor, 16-0 in favour of the Eels. Five minutes of the third quarter remaining. Simmons, Goodwin, Levy. Doing plenty of passing, the Panthers, but they're not going anywhere. Izzard, pulled down by Feeler. 19 is Brad War. Simmons, Howe, Levy, little chip by Greg, good chase there by Bergman, and uh, covered up by Neil Hunt. Quinn, both these clubs the junior district schools knock out on this weekend. Penrith at Jamison Park, Parramatta's in Parramatta Park. One of the best schoolboys in the area is going through their schools knock out this weekend. Peter Sterling. And uh, Levy's on a chase back there. Sterling's put them all on side. And makes the tackle. Mosley gets in for his share of proceedings. Number four running with it is Kevin Dan. Simmons. He's playing first pivot tonight, Simmons, more often than not. That's something that Simmons did a couple of years ago for Penrith, but we've seen more of him in the dummy half role so far this year, but he has dropped back out there again tonight. Maybe he thinks that there just isn't the organisation he'd like. Goodwin, put down by Izzard. I was just going to say a few minutes ago, Matt Goodwin, you know, in a beaten side, he's done plenty of work, hasn't he? He's really tried hard, Matt Goodwin, the prop forward for Penrith in 13. And prop forward's a position he's unaccustomed to. He's normally a back rower. Right. Scrum win to the Eels. This is Quinn. Long ball out to Ella. A few metres on the Penrith side of halfway. Paul Taylor. Here's Mosley gaining some free space. Edge is the dummy half. This is Quinn cutting out win. It's gone to Kenny. 
Kenny thought he was going to try and get it around the corner from an impossible position, but he plays it now. Wynn throws a big dummy to the outside, runs the blind, picks up Houghton. Ball goes back, taken by Paul Mayers. Mayers is held by the Penrith defence, and that's five. So Sterling may push this ball along the back line. He, he's decided now to kick it. And did the Penrith player get a touch? No, it's out on the full. Out on the full on a scrum about six metres. Penrith side of halfway. Fed by Alexander and won by the Panthers. Levy, beautifully tackled by Taylor. Davies. Well, Taylor just pulled off his 13th tackle for the game. War. Brad War with a good bust. And then hanging on just too long and Sterling. Much smaller of the two men, took him ball and all. Levy stretching it through Goodwin, Robinson, Gig, and the ball goes out and beautifully picked up. Off his bootlaces by Kevin Dan. That's another example of the ability of the Parramatta defence to be able to cover up breaks after they've been made inside. Penrith were home for all money then. They had a two-man overlap on the left-hand side, but the Parramatta defence was able to come across, nullify it, and finally force the screen. Sterling feeds. Berman is going to win it, but he's given a penalty. Well, <laughs> he's got the pen with inside backs for being in front of the front rowers with the ball still in the scrum. Total of uh, six penalties against uh, Penrith, two of them differentials. Sterling through Mark Laurie to Paul Mayers. Dummy half Mosley over halfway. Second tackle. Referee acknowledges the siren. That's the end of the third quarter with Parramatta leading Penrith by 16 points to nil. Welcome back now for the final quarter with Steve Ella to kick off. Uh, Ken Stewart and Nathan Gibbs, former Rabbitohs, have come on for the, the Parramatta side and Paul Mayers and uh, Peter Wynn have been replaced. Penrith the same unit as the one you had on before the break. This is Goodwin playing it. And Simmons working with the ball, getting it down to Alexander. Down to Goodwin, a handoff to Howe. And then pass back to Brad War. And Penrith trailing by 16 points to nil. A forlorn hope to think that they can progress to the semi-finals. First quarter final this. Well, by the way, it's a redraw for the semi-finals. And uh, we could have one heck of a cup final this year. You work it out for yourself. New South Wales Country East next week, then Canterbury, Brisbane, and then Balmain Saints. So you've got plenty of hot shots up there in the running to play in the cup final. Canterbury's never won a cup final, never been to a cup final. St. George, been there but never been able to do it. Brisbane, been there but never won one. East, the best, uh, the best nighttime football, uh, football combination in Sydney in the last decade, if you can go on the records. Oh, no, it, it should be a, a great night here in, in the middle of August. Uh, in fact, it's on the Wednesday night after, after we finish our Olympic, uh, Olympic Games coverage. So have we got an August and a half for you in sport? Ross Gig, good work. That's Robinson. That's even better work. Here's Alexander. 
Ran out of support. Simmons. This is more like the Panthers. Gary Howe. Connor behind Kevin Dan with Parramatta now. Taylor, Sterling, Hunt. The biggest point to come out of tonight, really, if you're looking at premiership aspirations, is that a fast, small side, a side that backs up and moves the ball, is not the side that's going to beat Parramatta. Feeling, looking around, finding Stewart. <laughs> the crowd cheering. Uh, Chris Phelan is recognised as a tackling machine and when it comes to attack he just simply takes the ball under the arm and takes it up and normally goes to ground with it. That time Chris was able to pop a pass away and the Parramatta fans roared. Fifth tackle now against the Blue and Golds as it goes to Sterling. He kicks and chasing it back is Kevin Dam, but it's beaten him. He didn't seem to show much urgency, did he? This was the kick on the National Panasonic replay. Kevin was getting down to it. I thought he had it well covered, and then all of a sudden it, it got a hurry on and beat him easily. I see Steve Martin's going to come on for Penrith in 14. And Craig Izzard will be the other one in 16 for Penrith. They're on the sidelines, stretching up. Craig's the six team with the blonde hair, and uh, Steve, he's the hooker come 5 8 or 5 8 come hooker who scored a heap of tries a few years back. Craig Connor coming off on the second end of this committed defence from Parramatta. Levy kicking. It's going to get there. Yeah, that's a good kick by Mark Levy. Finding touch 32 metres out from the Parramatta line. Kevin Dan coming off for Penrith, and so too coming out of the scrum is Peter Burke. Izzard to the wing, and Stevie Martin's gone to second row. Quinn playing across the ground before giving it to Taylor. His Gibbs, Nathan Gibbs. Member of the medical profession, Nathan. Is he on strike? Steve Edge. Sterling, oh, flick passing, and Taylor puts it down. It'll be a scrum just on the Penrith side of Hartway. So here comes a player in 16 who was a member of the 1982 record-breaking Kangaroos, and uh, Paul Taylor comes off. John Muggleton on in 16. I suppose Nathan would uh, be glad that he's got this second job at the moment. Penalty to Penrith, down in the scrum against Mr. Edge. So Parramatta's now got three hookers out there. Stewart, Edge and Mosley, all in the pack. But as I pointed out, Mike Mosley, he'd be quite happy where he's playing at the back of the scrum. Simmons, oh, Connor has put it down, and gee, that's costly. First tackle, coughing up the ball. Muggo. Gee, I'd like to see him do well, John Muggleton. He's had a wretched run of luck. Just can't get his form back from 1982. Penalty to Parramatta, that's against double markers.
Phelan. That would just be a settler for Parramatta. The play will be on this tackle or the next. It's the next. Stewart. 20 metres out from the Penrith line. We can look for something now. Sterling, Quinn, run around, acceptance. Kenny back on the inside. Kenny, Kenny to Ella. Gets out of a tackle. It's gone wide to Hunter, now to Mosley. And Mosley is tackled about five or six out. Sterling. Holding it back and then putting it down. And it's... Peter was wishing he had that one on the string. He tried to, tried to pull it back, but it wasn't there. Steve Martin. Jump of 14. Steve Martin. Craig is out. He's put it down. The referee is going to put a scrum down for losing it in the tackle. 15 nil to Parramatta with 11 minutes of time remaining. Sterling, Quinn, short ball, beautifully given to Kenny, turned inside for Nathan Gibbs, and he's flung to the ground. They're 10 metres out from the Penrith line to the blind. It's with Quinn, and this man is Laurie. But a lot of that uh, slickness has gone from the Parramatta attack without Cronin. Bosley now. It just seems they, they play with... 33 and a third percent more confidence with Cronin on the padding. Oh, it's not just Cronin's the fact that he's not there, it's also the fact that Kenny's not a five out. This is Houghton. <laughs> Feel it. <laughs> Dummy half Steve Edge. Asking Sterling, what are we doing? Here's Sterling, Quinn, the run around again, and Sterling puts the bomb up. And uh, Penrith taking it over the dead ball line, but a penalty to them. He's ruled the Parramatta players were in front of the kicker and, in fact, got inside the five. Simmons. Connor. Levy, cut out ball, across from Robinson to Davies, he did well to get around Hunt, Sterling makes the tackle together with Mark Laurie, out with Simmons, playing second pivot now, this is Howe, trying to get a pass over, he does, and Izzard, Craig Izzard, tackle, 10 metres his side of the halfway, they're on the first tackle, Roberts nullified the tackle count, a touch from Kenny. This is uh, Connor again. Superb game for you on Sunday for our viewers throughout New South Wales and uh, I guess uh, into Queensland as well, the Manly Canterbury game. That'll be a great contest. And really, I, I think it could be said that it's the day of reckoning for the Eagles. It's a very important game for them. If they were to drop two points in this one, there'd be no way they could make the first three. And that's a fight. More importantly, I feel that the form they show on Sunday will tell us whether or not they are grand final material. They've got everything their way, really. Brookvale. Although their players have had plenty of work, haven't they? Here's Quinn. First tackle. Should be a great day. Big promotional day down at Brookie on Sunday. This is Phelan. Playing it back to Steve Edge. Sterling setting something up now. He had it set up, but the runners just weren't there. Mosley. Short ball down the lorry. Round the corner pass. Straight to Brad Izzard. Ross Gig. Gary Howe. Back to Levy. Now Greg Alexander, Craig Izzard, more Alexander, and going fast over the halfway. Now it's been put down and towed ahead, so the referee will put the scrum down 32 metres out from the uh, parallel line. Right 
One by the Eels. Kenny. Put down by Kenny. Scooped up by Penrith to be played by Brad Izzard. Good win. Alexander. Simmons. War. Levy. Short ball. That's Robinson. Six or seven metres out from the Parramatta 22 line. About seven minutes of time to go. Alexander. Grubber kick ahead. Sterling is there. Oh, Sterling's failed to cover it up. Now that's going to be a knock on. I thought for a moment he may have given the penalty because, uh, to my way of thinking, Chris Houghton was offside. Let's have a look at it again as Sterling tries to clean it up. Where does Houghton come from? Mm. Offside for sure. Anyway, it's with Penrith now. And uh, Robinson pirouetting out of a tackle. Can the Eels defence hold? They've taken the ball from him. It'll be six more unless they come up with it. They have. Played by John Muggleton. And out from dummy half goes Nathan Gibbs. 15, me 15 metres out. Played back to Neil Hunt. And Hunt has tried to split them. He's out to the 22. Good work by Steve Martin. Gary Howe. Has played strongly for Penrith Howe. He and um, Goodwin in the forwards. Here's Goodwin now. 19 is Brad War. 12 metres out from the line. Can the Panthers score? Simmons, oh, Ella has gone for the intercept and come up with it. Hunt. Pursued and dragged down by Ross Gig. Nathan Gibbs, one-hander back to Hunt. Wide ball out to Sterling. Stretches it further with a cutout pass to Kenny. And it'll be a scrum unless Penrith have it. No, he's ruled knock-ons against both and putting a scrum down. Now we're inside the last five. One by the Panthers. Bad pass out to Brad Izzard. And Izzard tackled on the halfway line. Gig. Levy. Calling players inside him. Here's Alexander. Levy. Steve Martin. Kicks ahead. John Muggleton will take it. And is uh, tackled by Steve Martin. And forced to play it. Hunt. Houghton. Hunt again. Just outside the 22 line. Sterling. Levy, Brad Izzard, only about 15 metres out from the line. How? Held by Nathan Gibbs and Steve Edge. Simmons, kick into the in goal, Muggleton's there, takes it cleanly, tries to get back into the field of play and does so. Might have been Penrith's last chance to score. Here's Hunt. Sterling. Gibbs. Stewart. 
Quinn. Gibbs again has put it down, and it's a Penrith ball. Alexander, wide ball, out to Ross Gigg. Held by Mark Laurie. Connor. Thrown to the ground by Phelan. Alexander. War. Held by Stewart. Penrith on their fourth tackle. Alexander. Levy. Long ball to Brad Izzard. Knocked down by Brett Kenny. It'll be a scrum. Tackler, neat tackle too, right around the legs. Robinson, Levy, calling Izzard inside. Izzard getting a pass down, picked up there by Levy, given to Matt Goodwin, running with the ball in one hand. He's not a bad player, this fella. 15 out. Alexander showing it, then trying to get away from the defence. And he has! Alexander's over. Greg Alexander scoring for the Panthers. He probed and probed for it. And eventually decided it was time to go, but the bird has really flown. And they probably needed a bit more of Greg Alexander running himself earlier in the match. He got away from Steve Edge. He got inside Peter Sterling. That would have done him the world of good. Well, Craig Alexander beat some good players onto the try to the try line here. Firstly, Neil Hunt, then Steve Edge, and then Peter Sterling, and finally he goes through Nick Mosley's tackle to score the first try and the only points for the Panthers. Levy with a an easy kick. 16 to 4. Levy makes no mistakes. Raising the flags. 16 to 6 in favour of Parramatta. And there's the siren. It's all over. With the Eels going to the semi finals. Penrith bowing out. The try scorers for the Eels, Ella at the 14th minute, Kenny at the 39th, Cronin kick four out of four before being replaced, and Greg Alexander scoring at the 79th minute, with Mark Levy kicking uh, the one goal. So 16 to 6, and Bill and I'll be back with the superstar points and the man of the match award in just a moment. And it goes on to the semi-finals of the very rich National Panasonic Cup for 1984. Let's have a look at the superstar points allocation. And one point to Neil Hunt, two to Peter Wynn, and three to Brett Kenny. Of course, the man of the match, Brett Kenny. He takes out the $800 cash, courtesy of National Panasonic and Electronic Sales and Rentals. And also the National Technics Hi-Fi system valued at $800 as well from National Panasonic. Well, Parramatta tonight put it together uh, with Michael Cronin back in there, a back line that looks pretty much like the, the one that has taken them to three grand finals. And I'm wondering whether or not um, they're now on the way back to retaining their crown. They certainly looked like it tonight, didn't they? Penrith didn't play too badly, but Parramatta just had too many guns for them. Their defence was extremely committed. I thought their attack looked particularly good with Cronin, as you said, back in the centres. But I like the look of Kenny at 5'8". I think that's his best spot. Mm. I think that's where he's of most value to the team. Just talking about the Winfield Cup, Bill, <coughs> pardon me, the National Panasonic, we can't really talk about that because we don't know who's going to be there uh, as far as the semi-finals are concerned. But looking at the Canterbury, St George's, Manly's, Parramatta's, uh, do you think do you think Parramatta at this stage of the season are looking as strong as they have done over the last three years? 
I'm not one to back against Parramatta because they've got so many great players. Dangerous but, practice, isn't it? It sure is, but I don't think they are as strong as they have been in the past simply because they haven't had this team together for any extended period of time. In the mm -hmm. past, they've had that tremendous team rhythm. They haven't been able to develop that so far this year simply because they haven't had the players together. But if they can keep Cronin in the side and when they get players back such as Ray Price and so on, they're going to be very hard to beat.